I started out this episode trying to just work out some screen printing over pattern fabric and in the end it's turned out to be an exploration of a whole range of things. I've got some great tips on how to make stencils and also some tips on how to get the best print from your stencils. So join me as I explore stenciling pattern over printed fabric. Hi, good to see you. Welcome back to the channel. Apologies, it's been a lot longer than I'd intended between videos, but we're here now. I just want to say thank you to everyone who's recently subscribed to the channel. I hope you find the content interesting. Today we're going to transform this into this and maybe even into this. So where to start? Recently I was chatting to some friends online. One of them asked me, can you print onto pattern fabric? And the answer of course is yes, but how do you go about it? So there's two main elements to this process. Firstly is uh, the pattern you're working with. So the design element, and then there's a printing element. Now I think the printing element is fairly straightforward, but we'll go through that in some detail. The design process I think is we will have to spend some time to start off with. The two examples I have here are what I'd call a high contrast design option. This is a t-shirt with a Marameco stripe design. It had an unfortunate experience with some black denim jeans the first time it was washed. And in order to try and uh, take away from the stains, which wouldn't wash out no matter how much I tried, I decided to applique these uh, Marameco flowers, style flowers, onto the fabric. The same goes for this one. This is a uh, piece, this is some fabric used by Gorman. And you can see it's just a very plain black and white check. It's been enhanced by these machine stitched colourful spots. So that's your very high contrast option when it comes to design. This is a very subtle example of pattern on pattern. This is a print by the Canberra based printmaker Annie Trevilian, and she's printed this pine motif over an existing piece of fabric and you can see that there's not a lot of difference between the um, background and the colour she's chosen. So that's another option if you don't want to go high contrast. You can do this much more subtle effect. It almost looks like it was part of the original design. This is from a pair of rather old uh, trousers which I pulled apart recently. And as you can see, it's a very bold pattern already. So when I'm trying to think about what do I want to do, I have two options. I can go for something which can be quite bold and a high contrast. So that might be to either use a high contrast color like uh, black or even maybe white, although there's a bit of white here, it might get a bit lost or I can use a bold pattern. Now the examples I showed you earlier were basic stripes and checks which had a, an organic shape on them. Circles for one and a flower shape for the others. So that's one way of going about this. The other thing I could do is actually flip that idea and go for some sort of a geometric print over this whether it was a stripe or uh, even square, something like that, a check, just to break up this pattern. The paper I find most useful for making stencils, and this is something that should be relatively easy for most people to find, is purely a cover of a glossy magazine. I don't care particularly which magazine. Uh, the reason why I choose them is that the board or the paper they're made out of is not too thick, but 
for the most part, because it is a fancier magazine, they actually have quite good um, sizing on the paper, which means it's really resistant to moisture, which, which is what you need when you're doing this sort of work. I've used it consistently now for nearly a year and it's now my go-to. Now as you might have guessed from seeing the t-shirt uh, with the poppy pattern, I quite like florals and even though that's a floral print, I thought maybe a simplified flower design like this might work as a pattern. The other option I was thinking about was some sort of um, geometric pattern in this. So this is a random check. I'd leave these uh, pieces in and cut out the central sections. So they're the two basic design ideas that I'm going to play with today. And as I said, I'll also be playing with uh, color choice. Now I've just put my uh, stencil or my design drawn on a piece of my page for my sketchbook on top of that piece of magazine cover. I'm just going to trace around it with my pen pressing down really hard because what I want to do is transfer the design just by um, pushing through. I'm not doing any colouring on the back. I figure that the pressure of the pen onto the surface will make a dent that I can easily see. Now another obvious thing but probably still needs saying, uh, make sure that your piece of cardboard or paper that you're stenciling onto, whatever you're stenciling onto, is actually larger than your stencil so that you're not losing bits and pieces. And of course the other thing is, is that your stencil needs to be bigger than the plate that you're going to print from. Pressing down really hard because I want to make those indentations uh, visible. I can actually see that there are indentation marks here where I've drawn, traced the pattern from on top. What I think I'll do just to make it easier is I'll probably just go over these again with the pen so I can see what I've got. Now just a quick reminder that we're removing the central section and leaving the framework around it so I'll have a stencil when I finish. But please uh, don't throw away these bits, the bits you cut out. They're going to be very handy to use as masks later on and I'll also give you a bit of a look at how you might use those as well. And in a way, I suppose this shows you what's going to happen is that when we print, this will be the section that has the ink in it. And this will be the fabric that stays around it. And as I said, don't lose these pieces. They'll come in handy. The past few days of printing have been quite frustrating. To be honest, I have not been happy with the results I've been getting. The things that normally work have not worked with the stencil process. So firstly, I started printing as I normally would with a combination of acrylic paint and textile medium. And the proportions were one part of textile medium to two parts of acrylic paint which is the manufacturer's recommendation. I've never had any problems with this. It's always worked in the past. However, it just did not give me the degree of coverage that I required. So there were lots of gaps and misprints. So then I thought about it some more and I tried upping the amount of textile medium to 
paint so that it was one portion of textile medium to one portion of paint which made it more fluid and I certainly got better results with that but even then I found that to get something that I would consider um, a successful print I needed to get out my paintbrush and touch up a lot of areas to get a much more even coverage with the paint. So what I'm about to show you now is a combination of changing paints completely. So I'm changing to using a fabric printing paint and I've also developed a slightly different technique for the actual printing process which I'll also demonstrate and that has given me a much better result and that's a result and a process that I'm happy to share with you. A critical thing I think with this process is how fluid your paint is that you're using and up until now I've been using acrylic paint which has been mixed with textile medium and that's worked up to a point but it hasn't worked very well and it hasn't worked consistently so I'm actually swapping to a fabric paint because I'm hoping that this will just have a little bit more of the correct consistency for this process to work and again the details of what I'm using will be in the description below. So I've just got some paint on my plate and I'm sorry this is a very dark grey and I'm using this purely because there are very few colours I have in my uh, actual fabric paint supply that match the colours I'm using for the pattern I'm printing over. So I'm just going with this, not the best for the uh, filming process. I'm working with paint on the bottom, stencil over the top and I'm taking my fabric which is this bright fabric, you can see why I think grey might be the only thing that can work. I'm placing that piece of fabric over the top and pressing down. Now I can feel roughly where the stencil outline is and I think it's really worthwhile taking the time to smooth uh, where you can just try and gently push the fabric through that stencil if you can feel where it's going it can't hurt and hopefully it might help because the biggest issue I've had so far is coverage. Now one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the whole sandwich of jelly plate and fabric over and you can see, I can actually see where the gel plate hasn't stuck and I'm going to go over this with my brayer. Now the reason I'm doing it this way is that I found in the past when I've tried to use my brayer on top of the fabric the fabric has moved a lot and it hasn't worked. So right, I've done that. I'm now going to apply pressure in the form of a heavy book and some weights and I'm going to see how that goes. I've just got some paper to protect my book. I've also got another magazine underneath. Again, this is just purely to protect the book that I'm using. I've got that magazine down. I've got the book down. I'm going to press down because what I'm looking for is even pressure over my plate. I'm going to put some weights on top and then I'm going to leave that and I'll try 15 minutes and I'll just see how that works. Let's see how this turned out. Oh yes, I am much happier with that print than with anything I've printed in the past couple of days. Now there's a little bit of touching up that could be done here and there, but overall that's a really nice result.
this time I'm planning on printing the negative shape so instead of using the stencil I'll be using the flowers that I've cut out of the stencil and placing them on the, the wet paint a little bag of cutouts just so I don't lose them um, just randomly place them on the on here and again try and mix up the size and the shape and then I'll be ready to print I'm going to put this down carefully again smoothing it on with my hands um, I can actually see some of the stencils through the fabric this time sort of make it a bit easier for me and I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to flip this over now you can see here I'm hoping I'll get in close if I can you can actually see there are white bits and that's where the paint hasn't attached so what I'm going to do again is just take the brayer and rub that over the back of the print just trying to make better contact I started uh, with what I consider some really poor prints had varying degrees of success with that over the time uh, some things were worse some things were a little bit better and by the end of the day I produced my best print uh, this is using acrylic paint which I have actually touched up as well so the ones I'm most happy with the prints I'm most happy with came from the second day and these were the combination of using a fabric paint and in addition to using the fabric paint to doing as I said flipping the plate over brayering the back and then applying pressure and leaving it to sit now both of them I have actually touched up little bits so that's the other thing I suppose don't panic if it's not perfect get your paintbrush out and just touch it up I mean it's not rocket science it's not a test I'm not going to send the fabric police around to um, critique what you've done this is as I said at the beginning an experimentation it's not the final word and I really hope that in future episodes I can come back and do some more work share some more experimentation and some more results with you it would be great if you're prepared to give it a go and let me know if you have any successes or any issues you face you can just drop those down in the comments below I'm always happy to get your comments and again I just want to thank people for coming along and giving up your time to watch through these videos I hope they're helpful please let me know in the comments thank you very much season's greetings to you all and I hope you have an excellent 2024. See you in the new year. Bye.